what's up guys uh, thank you very much for being an electrica i appreciate that thank you for watching and thank you for subscribing great now today we're going to look at uh, overall daily release i know many of you you know much about uh motors okay especially three-phase motors let's say that you know more about that but what about protecting them okay most of you uh you know these overall relays okay you know that a motor is supposed to have an overall relay you put it there but sometimes you don't even size them correctly okay so before we go any further let's ask ourselves what's an overall relay okay so this is uh, a device of course an electrical device that uh, you know protects your, your motor it protects an electrical motor uh, against overcurrent okay but you would still say that uh, why would this guy protect the motor against overcurrent and uh, we keep on having these you know circuit breakers fuses inside our circuit okay why don't they protect the motor okay the simple answer to that is you know uh unlike a breaker but a relay also uh sense more of heat now look at the breaker if you protected your motor with the breaker only let's say your motor uh you know you rated it at around it draws around 15 amps and then you've protected it with a motor of 25 or 30 amps you understand uh now if this motor is drawing more current and it's going to burn okay you see that by the time by the time it draws that current that will trip a 30 amps breaker that means that it, the winding will be burned already but if you put this guy here this guy will you know sense the kind of because if that current is high uh, for a long period of time definitely the motor will overheat and if it does that this guy will sense the heat and it will trip you know the circuit so that's why okay all right now how does this guy operate so this uh, overall relay, it's unique. So we have the electronic one, but today we are looking at the bimetallic one, okay? So these uh, bimetallic strip, they are being operated by temperature, okay? By heat, okay? So uh, each motor is rated, and that means that if you're sizing for a motor, you have to size for, for a correct contactor and then for a correct, you know, uh, over delay in terms of, of of the current rating okay because the rating of this in terms of the current rating at what where you said you said the threshold at what current uh, does it have to trip after sensing that so most of them they will have now like this one that i'm holding uh it will operate within from 23 26 29 up to 32 okay and then I have this one, which will operate from 5.5 to 8 amps, okay? So, the, uh, the, most of you, you, you know, you put breakers on these motors, like that amps breaker. Now, look at this, you know, it will take that at 8 amps, okay? If you set it at the lowest, at 8 or 5.5, uh, so that means that it will trip the motor before even it burn. But without this, it means that the motor has to reach the braking capacity of the breaker which you had put for uh, that one of 30 amps then the breaker will break but by the time it breaks the motor is gone already okay now let us ask ourselves why does this you know overall trip what causes it trip of course it's overheating of course it's overcurrent but where does the overcurrent come from so we can look at a, a few things uh, that can cause overcurrent, okay? So, we may talk about uh, low voltage, okay? Low voltage really can cause this motor uh, uh, to burn because look at, you have a three-phase motor which uses around 415 the area where I, where I am and maybe 380 in some other areas, okay? and you are operating this motor then this voltage drop all of a sudden 415 
drops all the sudden to maybe you know maybe 250 or maybe 380 okay so you see here that that will be a significant you know drop in that voltage and definitely that will cause you know this motor to strive and then to drop that you know more current that that, that in turn will cause it to to burn okay the other thing also we can talk about is low low pf low power factor uh you all know how important improving our power factor is okay uh, it's very crucial, especially when you're running these machines. You know very well that if the power factor is low, then we are just going to have a very high current, okay? And then the voltage will low. If the voltage is low, then it means that the voltage drop is super high, okay? So, only that will cause, because the motor is running, will keep on striving, okay? And it will affect uh, the, the operation of that motor, okay? So it will overheat and then it will trip this guy, okay? So low voltage, low power factor. Then the other thing also we can think of uh, that is very important. You must note that uh, these motor spins, okay? At perhaps maybe let's say for example, at a revolution of, uh, you know, maybe 1,800 RPM, okay? That's the, that's the speed, okay, that it's rated right at. And now, this motor maybe is driving a certain load. A, a load can be a grain mill, can be a crusher, you know, kind of stuff. Eh? And then, uh, if there is a sudden resistance on that rotation, okay, sudden resistance on that rotation, definitely, because you can't reduce, uh, you know, the speed of that motor without, you know, proper mechanism, okay? So if there is an opposition to, the, to that speed of the motor or to the rotation of that motor, definitely that one will cause it to, you know, to overheat and burn. Because, you know, it's, uh, it's creating that energy of, you know, uh, giving it a rotation and in turn there is an opposition. So if there's a position, the motor keeps on working harder to overcome the opposition, then definitely that will cause the motor to, to burn, okay? So let us look at, uh, you know, something like uh, increasing a sudden load, okay? Uh, you know, the situation where uh, these mechanical machines that are being driven by motors, uh, maybe like a crusher, I said earlier. So a crusher, maybe you're adding so many things in there and then this motor, will, you know, will start getting difficult in, you know, turning uh, whatever it's turning that side, okay? And that will definitely increase uh, it will cause it to draw more current and then burn, okay? So things like that. So you have to watch out on that. Then the other thing also, we have to look at, um, you know, the misalignment. You know, the misalignment. So, yeah, it, there can be, you know, a misalignment in, in, the, uh, in the shaft, let me say, if there is a misalignment in the bearings that are in the other end, you know, because this is an electrical energy that it's, it's being transferred to the mechanical, you understand? So if a bearing breaks, or let me say if a gear breaks, okay, or if a gear is misaligned uh, inside the gearbox, definitely that one will cause our, you know, motor to overheat and in turn will break uh, this overhead, really, okay? So, uh, if uh, the important thing is that if you're protecting your motor, number one, you must size this correctly, okay? You must size it correctly. You must make sure that the braking, you know, uh, you have the right, uh, the, you have the right overload for your motor, okay? Such that if it breaks, it breaks in the correct way. Because, you see, if again, if you uh, underrate it, that means that even a normal you know, temperature for that motor, it will cause it to trip, okay? So you have, you must size it correctly. Then uh, you must also make sure that the load is not sudden. You must make sure that uh, the alignment is good, the, all the bearings, the gears are good, all that. The other thing, you have to make sure that the voltage are good. And, the, the, and there are so many uh, uh, 
uh, components that can protect that. So, for example, if you had these, uh, you know, uh, first of all, if you had the sequence uh, monitor, you had the voltage monitor, and you have incorporated them in your circuit, yeah, you know, it's a, it's a super cool. That one can keep your motor safe from burning, okay? Now that you know how to protect your motor, go in the comment section below and tell me what else you want to learn about and especially as far as motors are concerned. I'll be glad to, you know, to come up with a topic about that and then I come right here and uh, we uh, talk about that. Okay, you see, uh, we can also talk about how does this guy operate. You see, I told you earlier, we have a metallic strip here, okay? So, if the motor draws a high current and in turn it overheats, that heat is transferred here. And it is made by metallic strip in any, it, they're not supposed to be that all the winding because no matter that can happen in one winding, okay? So, any winding can creep the circuit. And, uh, And uh, if you remember, we have two contacts here. Uh, we have a normally open, and then we have a normally closed, okay? That, they are the contacts that are here. So, uh, you know, always your supply, your main supply, the control circuit, uh, it has to, your control, this is L, then this is so your control always has to come here and pass through the normally what the the normally closed then the normally open that's where you have to connect your your light your indicator light that will tell you that hey this guy has tripped so here here is where you're going to feed okay so this definitely will come here, and this can also, you know, loop here. You can put it here. So same thing. This one goes, and then so you have your life come in here, and then this one goes to your circuit, whatever circuit that you have. Then this one goes to, to your indicator light. So if this one opens, this one closes, and then you find the light on. Okay. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate that. If that helps, don't forget to subscribe, to like, and share. And sharing if you have any friend that this kind of content interests them, then you have to, sh to share it. Why not? So until next time, I'm out.